This is your Peace News for Monday, June 3rd, 2013. Silver is trading at $23 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $121 per Bitcoin. Billionaire entrepreneur and former Microsoft executive Jamin Shively has teamed up with former Mexican president Vicente Fox. They have announced plans to open retail marijuana stores, starting in Washington and Colorado, and expanding around the world. The former president said that prohibition doesn't work, and that it has only led to death and violence in his country due to otherwise legitimate markets being pushed underground. Shively assures the press that they are, quote, big marijuana, and they want to be as big as Starbucks or McDonald's, creating an international brand for their product. In other news, less than a week after the jury acquitted him of three criminal charges, Eric DeFord and Philip Ferris, attorneys for the Wisconsin Department of Justice, moved to have the jury revoke the terms of the bond and jail raw milk dairy farmer Vernon Hirsch Burger. The judge has yet to make a ruling on the motions. Stay tuned to Peace News Now for more details. In other court news, the Supreme Court decided this morning in a 5-4 decision that police can take DNA samples from people they arrest without getting a warrant. Justice Antonin Scalia read his dissenting opinion aloud in the courtroom, quote, Make no mistake about it. Because of today's decision, your DNA can be taken and entered into a national database if you are ever arrested, rightly or wrongly, and for whatever reason. More peace news after this message. Have you ever heard of Bitcoin? It's a new currency, faster than credit cards, and no chargebacks. Send money to friends and merchants directly, without using a bank. They're free to accept, plus generate new business from the Bitcoin economy. They aren't tied to your name, so your identity is safe. Spend them online or in retail stores using your smartphone. Learn more about Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. The story of Ibrahim Todashev gets more complicated as yet another explanation is offered by government officials which conflicts with previous accounts. Ibrahim was a friend of Tamerlan, one of the alleged Boston bombers. When the FBI visited his house to ask questions, he ended up dead. The official story has changed so many times, it's unlikely that a single one is accurate. The latest line from police has the injured fighter using a pole or broomstick to attack the FBI agents, even after being shot. But of course, they never deployed their weapons. <coughs> Cover up. <clears throat> in a related story, Zokart Sarnaev, also known as Jahar, is now walking, talking, and claiming he's innocent. This story still has a lot more questions than answers. In other news, over 900 people have been arrested in mass protests in Turkey. Several have been killed. The crowd seems united in their increasing dissatisfaction with Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who some say is becoming increasingly authoritarian. While mainstream media outlets like the Cartoon News Network Work have decided to run stories on penguins instead of the protests, independent bloggers are picking up the slack, writing articles, posting pictures, and live-tweeting information about the protests as they happen. Pictures show amazing aerial shots of Taksim Square, protesters clashing with riot police in Bodrum, Turkey, police using tear gas and water on student protesters, an old man being beaten by riot police, blood in Istanbul's streets, and police using boots to stomp on the faces of unarmed men and women. The so-called leader of Turkey promised the people upon taking office, quote, I am not a king. I am your servant, not your master. This is the same lie that all politicians tell the people. In a related story of perverted service, a handicapped woman saved her own life by dialing 911 during a police beating. Although she's being charged with felony assault on an officer, the 911 recording is the only record of the severe beating this partial deaf and cognitively disabled woman received at the hands of police. She tried to explain to the officers that she has mental and hearing disabilities, and although an eyewitness confirms that the woman was not resisting, the police used closed fists to punch the woman several times in her face until she collapsed on the ground. Police are sticking to their story that the unarmed, mentally disabled woman attacked them, but the audio of the 911 call vindicates the innocent woman. This helpful tip can be utilized by anyone under attack by police. While calling 911 is usually a bad idea, if you don't have your own recording device handy, try calling and let them record what's happening. Links are in the show notes. This has been Peace News, your daily update on the peaceful evolution. Get more Peace News on the next news network. And for daily videos, subscribe at youtube.com slash peacenewsnow. For peacenewsnow.com, I'm Derek J. reminding you that peace is the way.